In this short video, I'll be taking you through how to respond to the case study questions for 3.6 water for the Cambridge IGCSE geography exam. And these are the questions that appear in paper one. So over the course of this video, we'll be going through together syllabus requirements, a little bit of background revision of the geographical theory, how to go about getting the place specific references, the data to help you answer these questions, and giving you a model response for these seven mark questions. So how to use this content, really play, pause, have a go answering some of these questions, rewind if you're unsure, and then practice. Practice, practice, practice. Really important that you go through, you look at all the different variations, these seven mark questions for water to make sure that your case studies enables you to answer any potential variation. But I will not give you an answer to copy, but I will show you exam technique. I will give you a structure of how to maybe approach some of these questions and things to consider, a way to double check and refine your case study notes and some tips on how to gain maximum marks. So just a quick recap of the paper one assessment breakdown. Please do use the chapters in the video to scroll through if you know all this, but you know your paper one is one hour and 45. It's worth 75 marks, 45% of your final grades. You respond to three by 25 mark responses. Of the, within those questions, you have to answer three by seven case study questions, which is roughly 30% of this exam. There are three sections and you answer one 25 mark question from each. Section A is theme one population assessment. Question one is any or a mix of population themes. Question two is any or a mix of assessment themes. Section B, question three is any or a mix of themes 2.1 to 2.5. Whereas question four is any or a mix of themes not asked in question three. And section C is from theme three. Question five, any or a mix of themes from 3.1 to 3.7. Question six is any or a mix of themes not asked in question five. So what does the syllabus requires us to do? And no. Methods of water supply and proportions of water used for agriculture, domestic and industry, depending on levels of developments and explain why there are some water shortages in areas and demonstrate that careful management is required. Whereas the case study is looking at water supply in a country or area. So uh, you won't be able to watch it from this video, but I'll put a link in the comments. This video uh, is quite an old one now from um, Ted Eds, but it's a brilliant overview of water supply. So water supply, if you from that video, you can break it down into three drips. And I've labeled it there. So the first trip you can do is looking at the percentage of fresh water versus total water. From that, you need to know that of the small amount of fresh water there is on the planet, how much is stored within surface water, groundwater, or glaciers. And again, look for the final one, how do we go about using um, our global water? Now at the bottom, you can see it says agriculture. And agriculture is predominantly our main use of water, followed by industry, and then a small amount for domestic. So again, when you're looking at your case studies, it's really important that you have a go at thinking about, okay, what is, first of all, the main uses of how those three, domestic industry and agriculture, how are they used within my country? So where do we get water from, fresh water from? Well, there are sort of main, three main areas. You've got surface water, groundwater, and through artificial means such as desalinization. So I'm just gonna go through them now. If you know all this, please wind through to the, using the chapters, the parts that apply to you. So lakes and rivers, the main source of uh, surface water, this is Northern Italy. Anyone who's been to Northern Italy will know there's huge numbers of lakes in the North and they are the main stores of water for the summer months fed by precipitation and snow melts and snowpack over the winter. And so you can start seeing more in the case like Italy, if that rain or snow doesn't occur, then the lakes are in big trouble. And if the lakes are in big trouble, Italy being a, main, a big hub of foods, those sectors are gonna suffer. And so that's really important then that you look at other uses of water. So industry, power generation, that we mentioned about agriculture, manufacturing. And so you've got the challenges that if rain doesn't happen or if you overuse water, that's prepared to be replaced, then that's going to have a big impact on farms as well. Dams and reservoirs. We build artificial dams to store water. And you can see here in Lake Meads with the Hoover Dam, in the bottom left hand corner of the um, satellite image. And again, you can see that actually if those are not fed water very quickly, and this is 1983, there can be huge issues when it comes to droughts. So again, when it comes to fresh water, you need to look at what are the challenges it comes to managing fresh water. And in the case of the dam, if that dam drops too low, 
you might not be able to generate electricity. Other main source, particularly in countries like India, um, throughout Africa, ground, and in most places really around the world, groundwater and aquifers. So water, so water gets uh, fed into the ground through infiltration, percolation, through underground rivers. In fact, it's stored there, and you can see where it's kind of stored there. You've got the confined aquifer, so generally they flow into these beds that sort of trap the water, and we drill big holes into the ground boreholes and then we pump out that water sometimes in countries that have rich ply of water that groundwater is recharged regularly but other times it's not and so actually we extract more than we put back into the ground and that will bring challenges as well this is sort of how a borehole system works and you obviously got a simple well desalinization this is the ones that we potentially um are Really expensive, incredibly energy intensive, but in very dry countries um, need to be used. And this is now starting to see a solution. This is from Australia, Middle East, heavily dependent on desalinization. Other very small countries, very wealthy countries, Singapore is reliant on it. But poorer, poorer countries now turn into it as a stable source of water. And, you can, and if you want to take some time to look through how the process works. And then at a push, you've got water transfer schemes. This is where in countries um, where it's not, well, some parts of the country are very, very wet. They would transport water to other parts of the country that aren't. This is very expensive to do, quite difficult, and requires very careful management of water. Also with water, you know, why is it becoming more important? Well, this is from the Sustainable Development Goals, number six. This is one of the main goals, but as a result of climate change, global warming, population growth, developments, economic developments, we are putting more and more and more pressure on dwindling water supplies. So how do you get the data to answer, to respond to these questions? Well, our world and data is a phenomenal source of information for you. And I've put the links there of the ones that I think will be potentially useful for you. That will help you get some information about your country or your case study. And so again, really 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 do use those links click on it and i'll show you which ones are very useful for your case study so using these graphics we're just going to go about looking at the challenges of water supply so you can see here this is taken from 2019 which at the time of making this video was the most recent data i could get so you could see the countries that extract the most amount of fresh water and so obviously you can see that there's a relationship between number of people and the amount that you extract so you can look at india china they in particular extract some of the most largest populations in the world. You've also got economic development. That's going to have a huge factor. So take America, for example, very wealthy country. Um, so they might extract lots of water. You can even look at high rates of technology. So again, the further you go to countries that produce a lot, very uh, manufacture a lot, they themselves need that water to generate energy, huge amounts of energy to manufacture. And also you've got domestic use. Wealthy people have their own homes, have their own water needs, and again, so wealthy country, sorry, they're going to extract lots of water for their domestic use. You've also got countries, maybe in oil-rich areas, gas-rich areas, will need that water. Countries where um, it's very hot, they might have to extract to make keep cool. There might not be much water for them to extract, so that might explain why it's low. And you've got areas that are rich in water themselves, might explain why they're able to extract lots, because simply they just have a lot of that resource. And again, urbanized nations, the more urban your country, the more water you extract as well to keep those cities functioning. So when it comes to three other types, you can see this is a really good source to help you looking at countries and what they use for agriculture. You've got industry. And you've got municipal waste. So basically, this is domestic use. And so looking at those three data sets, I will give you the links to them in the comments. Again, that will help you by clicking on the country of your choice. You can see and you can build that little drip from the starts to show you the percentages that go to industry, domestic and agriculture. So let's go through the factors that can lead to water shortages. You've got low precipitation. If you simply don't receive enough water, you're going to have water shortages. If you extract more than you get high temperatures, increase evaporation, demand. So you demand more water than you actually get. Land use, do you um, actually try and store water or do you over you allow water just to simply be left there and not evaporate away? 
regional variations as well, so your country simply might not receive enough water. Other parts, yes. And then you've got conflicts. Are you preventing people from actually access water? Are you stopping people from, are you actually stopping water flowing into a country? And then when you talk about the impacts of water shortages, well, okay, you can keep it relatively obvious and simple. Your agricultural production is in decline. Power generation might struggle. There might be an impact on livestock. You might have to kill your livestock, so your animals that you rear, because you simply cannot keep them alive. Your economic, economic development might struggle. Your wildlife and local animals might also die out. Again, that might trigger conflict. So you, in other parts of the country or other countries that have water, you might go into conflict with them to get. And obviously, human health will struggle. In the chat, I'll put some various links to various articles that I thought particularly very, very good that might help you as well with this. So how can we go about managing our water supplies? There are many different ways, but it all depends on where you are based. First one is change crops. So you can either grow crops that require less water to use. So for example, um, Sachets, almonds, they require huge amounts of water to grow, avocados as well, so you might change the crops to ones that consume less water. Or you might, for example, if you rear lots of animals, stop rearing animals because for the feed, water for them, it's huge, you might stop that altogether. Or indeed, grow crops that have been genetically modified to cope in dry conditions. You might recycle your water, so clean your water after use and put that back into the network. You might desalinate. Use technology such as drip technology to, um, so when you're um, watering plants, the drips go directly into the roots, not are sprayed onto it, or indeed within your homes. Encourage technology companies to have electric appliances that um, are way more efficient at using water. Rainwater collections on top of buildings, around people's homes, up in the mountains, you are collecting more rainwater for so what we call grey water, so they think toilets and things like that. You might fix the leaks within your infrastructure. You'd be surprised at how much within a country uses, loses water, sorry, due to leaky pipes in the grounds, on the surface, so fix those. Cloud seeding technology, so making clouds rain more, and I'll put a link in to show you an example of where that works. And awareness campaigns, educate people on conserving water. Although domestic use um, is perhaps the limit, the, the lowest amount of most water use in most countries, even if we all reduce our, our consumption, that will have a huge benefit. So there could be sort of fining for having swimming pools. It could be encouraging people to have fewer showers or shorter showers. It might be with even within an industry to so get them to encourage them to use less water in, in innovative ways. And indeed support farmers to change their practices to use technology or crops or seeds or something that uses less water. So how to respond to these case study questions? Just a quick reminder, it's not all about numbers. So some key command words that are usually used with these seven markers, describe, explain, justify, and you can see what they mean and what they require you to do on your screen. So common seven mark responses for water, and these are looking at all of the past papers from, uh, from now publishing this video all the way back to 2016, and these are the ones I've sort of extracted. For a named area or country you've studied, describe the methods used to supply water. For a named country or region you've studied, explain how clean water is supplied. And for a named country you've studied, explain how water supply is being managed to ensure future supplies. And for a named country or area you've studied, explain how sufficient water is supplied for domestic stroke industrial use. So you can see when doing this, we not only need to look at just the general methods, you also look at, need to look at why they're using those methods, how they're managing the water, and actually how they might be specifically doing it for domestic, industrial, or indeed agricultural use. So again, I refer to the links of Our World and Data because they are phenomenal in getting the most up-to-date, easily accessible data. And so when you're talking about place-specific references, you know, you, something that might be considered is total population and GDP per capita, percentage of domestic, industrial, and agricultural use of water, any name of reservoirs, etc., and maybe future or current building projects such as you know, current desalinization plants, are they thinking about potential water transfer schemes? So you might want to put together a little flashcard with something like this, little drip, and in that drip, you're talking about the total population. You might want to include the GDP per capita, 
And with that drip, you might want to mention about the water and how it's split up in terms of domestic, industrial, energy manufacturing, agriculture. So, I don't know, in a country, 8% might be from domestic, 22% might be from industry, and then 70% for agriculture. And then you talk about the main supplies of water. So you've got desalinization, groundwater, recycling technology, or indeed if they're used or they're storing it in reservoirs. How much of that percentage is used for fresh water and where does it go in terms of domestic or sorry, how much of that percentage is do those methods add to the total amount of fresh water supply? And again, to what extent are they prioritized for maybe domestic industry or agricultural use? So go back to one of those questions from named country or area you have studied, describe the methods used to supply water. So I would do something like firstly in insert country gains X percent of water from ground of its water from groundwater, which is mainly used by farms through the use of drilling boreholes. And then I'll go through looking at pretty much from my table, the most used method to the least used methods and just giving a potentially reason why. And you can see here on the right hand side, some ideas of what you could potentially mention. This question explains how clean water is supplied. Again, you're going through the main uses and you're telling me why they are doing this or why they're using those methods. And then for this one, how has it been managed to ensure future supplies? So you've got, firstly, wastewater is recycled. This is because. Secondly, it comes from desalinization. This is because. Thirdly, the country is aimed to use less water by using technologies such as irrigation. And finally, other methods have been used such as this is because. And then for the last one, here's sufficient water supply for industrial use. This is when you need to use your tables quite clearly and maybe talk about how they're using the various different schemes to encourage these, this part of the economy to use water. So in conclusion, short answer responses are very useful. If you struggling for points, go back over short answer questions because sometimes they might provide you points to help you structure your response. Data and place facts are both equally important. Get up to date data. Five points to describe, four explain, and practice. Thank you for watching.